Carl Langford, uh, pretty successful two days. Tell us about it. Yeah, awesome. I mean, what an event. Uh, it doesn't get any better than that. Coming out on top, home team, home crowd, and uh, first event of a brand new series. It was just an awesome way to top it off today, uh, beating Nathan and Team Japan in the match race. And quite a boat too. Yeah, the boats are just a, a big step on what they were in Bermuda and in the way that they, you know, that they're designed. And uh, it's just awesome to sail. And there's a lot of technicalities and a lot of small things that we're still getting wrong, which is seen, you know, in the racing. And even we made a big, or I made a big mistake in that last race, which uh, got Nate back into it. And uh, so there's still a lot of learning. And I think by the end of the season, the level's going to be very high. And what was that big mistake? Uh, in attack, I just fired the board up, and uh, so the, we lost all lift, and the boat crashed down. And and going into the manoeuvre, we were doing 22 knots, and suddenly we were doing eight. And so then uh, we probably lost 150 metres in that one manoeuvre. Take us through the playbook of a jibe. What's going on for you? Uh, in a jibe, it's it's pretty busy for me, and it's actually quite different to what I did in Bermuda. So for me, it's a new role and a new skill that I've had to learn and develop over the past few weeks. And so I cross the boat, I hand the wing sheet off to Jason Waterhouse, I cross the boat, I preset the new wing sheet, I then grab the wheel, I have my foot hovering over the board up button, and I have my finger on the twist. And then as the board, or as the new board gets fired, Slingsby says turning, and then he says your wheel, I grab the wheel, and at the right time I fire the old board out of the water, I twist the wing so it's the low drag setting out of the, out of the manoeuvre, and then uh, and I grab the wheel and pick the exit angle. And then as soon as I've done that, I grab the wing sheet and ease it to help the wing attach flow on the new side. And so it's a pretty, I mean, it's a lot of juggling and uh, takes a lot of coordination. And I haven't been very successful at it so far, but we've managed just to scrape through and get a few done this week. Hearing the onboard comms, so I was hearing uh, Slingsby saying things like 2-1 pop, is that, that's wing, is it? No, that's not the wing, that's right. onto the foil. So there's a lot of coordination between the hydro and the aero package. And so when he goes to rake the board and add lift to the foil to get the boat out of the water, I also do some trimming. And, uh, and exactly what I do, I don't want to talk about because, I mean, the other teams are trying to, trying to emulate that. And um, so there's a lot of coordination between him and myself. And so he's just telling me the, mo the exact moment that he's adding angle of attack to the foil to get the boat out of the water. So coming out of a jibe, pretty low apparent wind, what are you doing with the wing? Are you giving it more camber and then... Well, in, initially, you well, I twist it initially to try and reduce the angle of attack of the flap. And, uh, and then once we, um, yeah, once we, the apparent wind starts to build, you can add camber and power the top up again. But the initial part, if you don't reduce the, um, the top camber, then you end up stalling the top of the wing. So with the wing so that's with the twist and then with the wing sheet you're easing it as much as you can and you're just trying to get the angle of attack to to match the uh the apparent wind angle so has this got more permutations than a normal sail it seems incredibly complex it is it is very complex in its design and but very sim simple in its execution and and the way that you operate it is very simple i have a i have one rope and i have one joystick one is effectively the traveler and one is effectively the main sheet so the way that you actually operate it is very very simple so I'd argue that somebody at a reasonable level could actually jump on and trim the wing at a reasonable efficiency. And I think where the, uh, where the finesse comes in is how to do it efficiently and, and at the right times and, and, and just trying to figure out the finer details to it. It looks like a small winch drum and they look like fairly fine lines. Have you got a lot of load or is it quite light on the wing? No, the wing is relatively unloaded and a, and a boat with uh, an equivalent sized boat with a main sheet, the, the load on the main sheet would be probably five tonne. Whereas we only have a winch load of about 500 kilos, and the reason for that is, is the the rigidity of the wing is what actually takes the load, and so you're not transferring all that main sheet load to get leech tension. The actual flaps and the structure of the wing take all the load, and that's what actually results in a really low uh, wing sheet load. I saw you easing, pulling in, easing, pulling in quite a bit. Um, are the grinders just constantly grinding, and you've got the drum there, and you can just let it go? No, not at all. <laughs> um, I mean, that that would be nice, but uh, unfortunately, they're not. You know, they they are power on tap, but not not to that extent. And so, they I rely very heavily on their feel, and we've got Sam Newton and Kai Hurst to a 
two incredible athletes and sailors as well and so I rely a lot on their feel for the trim ups and obviously I'm in control of the ease and so I really rely heavily on them and their feel and then that allows me to get my head out of the boat looking at the shifts a bit more. Right, so you don't even need to say grind or anything, they're just watching you and watching the camber and getting the feel. Yeah, exactly, and I rarely say trim. It's only if I'm a little bit stressed that we're going to touch the hull down I might say trim quite quickly, you know, in quick succession. But yeah, rarely, rarely do I have to say anything they, they know. You guys are tethered, that's something different, just very quickly. Is that awkward getting across the boat? Yeah, it is. It is, uh, it is a little bit difficult being tethered, but it also gives you an added degree of safety. And when you're, when you're crossing the boat at 45 knots, it's certainly not comfortable. And, and actually, the more you do it, it does become more natural, but it's still, it's still not a lot of fun. So it's good to get over there quickly and also have confidence that if something were to happen in that moment when you're out of the cockpit and out of the safety, you've got a tether and you will be attached to the boat. The panel that's on the bottom of the wing there, uh, tell us what that is. It's a, di- it's a digital display. What's it telling you? Yeah, so that's on the wing, there's the tactical software and, uh, and on there it's a bird's eye view of the race course and it, so it gives us information about the boundaries and how, how quickly we're approaching them and, and when we need to do our manoeuvre so we don't run outside the course. And on top of that, it's the true wind angle, boat speed and all the regular kind of information that you have on your wind instruments. Well, congratulations, that's pretty good. Good luck for the next one. Yeah, thank you very much. I think it's going to be a great season. <laughs>